Hey there, it's Timmy Joe. I'm back on the X299 Choo Choo. Woo woo! Uh, I know I'm a I'm I'm stupid. Uh, so I just wanted to show you guys. I've got the uh, the old BIOS here loaded to optimized defaults, and then all I'm doing here is setting the XMP profile to 3200 to support my fast memory and uh, hit save changes and reset. And boom. So we're going to do a baseline of what the stock speeds of the 7740X are. And then we are going to do some incremental overclocking to see just how far we can get it with this open air test bench and a pretty decent uh, AIO cooling solution from Arctic, the Arctic Freezer 240. Uh, and uh, I got to admit, I already did a little bit of this work ahead of time, so I knew kind of where we were going to be. So we're going to do this in three stages. Uh, one is going to be stock, one is going to be probably what's worth it to just have 24 7. Uh, and then one is going to be uh, as far as I can go with that without delitting or without, uh, you know, some sort of extreme LN2 hyper, uh, you know, helium solution or something like that. So let's just jump right on into Windows here and we're going to uh, do absolutely nothing but load Cinebench and hardware monitor and as you can see here uh, I've got some nice recording software running here this is a uh, external capture card so there's nothing to worry about uh, in you know actually capturing this so I uh, want we'll to make sure that everything is loaded uh, maybe just close Chrome here because I like to make sure as many processes are killed as possible but pretty much nothing's uh, running here and then just make sure our CPU utilization and uh, make sure our temperatures have baselined and are bottomed out alright so we're hovering around ambient temperature there we'll hit a little you know Cinebench run so I know that this isn't like the end-all be-all of benchmarks for uh, stuff like this, but uh, it's like fun to play around with and I'm sure you guys like to see what's kind of uh, you know 7740x can do stock versus overclocked So I figured I'd bring that information to you while I had it in my hands uh, I've got 32 gigabytes of GEAL uh, 3200 uh, speed memory in here and GTX 1080 uh, not that that matters too too much and uh, Like I say the liquid freezer there is doing a pretty good job of keeping things cool. We're not getting anywhere above 60c stock uh, uh, well, we're at load, and uh, we'll see a final result of uh, just shy of a thousand uh, in Cinebench. Let's, let's see if we can run it one more time. I gotta say, this is slow as all hell, considering what I have in store. You know, or you've probably already seen Threadripper, all 32 threads working get that done in a matter of seconds so yeah we're still not hitting our thousand benchmark so uh keep that in mind and but our thermals never really above 62 degrees celsius and this is running stock volts of course the only thing we changed was the memory speed and it probably would have done that anyways on this motherboard it would have automatically grabbed an xmp profile and worked it in there i just wanted to make sure so we'll reload into the BIOS, and I'm going to set a 5 gigahertz overclock uh, that I mentioned in the first video with this motherboard. Uh, something very, very easy to do, literally altering a handful of settings to uh, really increase the performance. Uh, and this is something that I would run for gaming 24 hours a day, no problem with this cooling solution, because why the hell not? Sync core ratio limit, we want to change that to 50. Boom. And that should hit our, uh, it's basically the multiplier there, uh, times 100. So we're hitting 5,000 megahertz. And then uh, because we could leave the voltage in auto, uh, and it would probably take care of itself at this low pro uh, point. But I'm going to switch this out from auto to ma uh, manual mode, or you could even, even go into offset mode. Uh, but we'll change this to uh, 1.28, uh, which uh, stock in, in wouldn't get anywhere near there, and it actually doesn't even ever get to that point. That's kind of a limitation, uh, kind of moving the bar ahead. But uh, those are the only two settings you have to do to run 5 gigahertz. In fact, uh, you, you don't have to do this because it'll, it'll take care of itself, but you could even set your fan curve on your CPU fan, which I have... Um, my AIO fan set as CPU fan, so we'll set that to turbo, and we'll hear a, uh, a change in audibility a little bit, but uh, if this was in a case, you really wouldn't hear it. 
and that's just going to assure our temperature stay nice and toasty low. So hit uh, save changes and then OK. A few moments later. Now we can already see our peak temperatures have uh, on load into windows uh, have already hit above where we were hitting at load before. So we do see a temperature change doing this, even loading into windows. But Cinebench tends to be like the all out maximum. And uh, you know what? Your chip might be different. You might have different interface material uh, or you know different uh, silicon lottery winnings than this chip I got. Uh, and it might require you to uh, really check on your temperatures and making sure you're not frying anything. But as long as we're not, we're not getting in like the high 80s, you should be you know, having no problem to run this 24-7. Uh, and I would definitely recommend running like an IDA64 uh, test or Geekbench uh, on repeat uh, to make sure that this is bone stock stable uh, for at least 45 minutes or so once you're done your overclock. But... Bam! So doing this, we see an immediate increase in temperature but we do see an immediate increase in score in our the potential of our system uh, now hitting well over the thousand mark in Cinebench. Uh, uh, 1083 is a pretty damn good score for this chip and uh, hitting five gigahertz. And you see our temperatures never even hit 80 at max load there. So with these settings, you wouldn't have a problem running this all the time. So as you can see, our voltage did not even uh, go up uh, that, that high there. So it, it didn't even hit 1.2 volts uh, because, you know, there, when you set 1.28 volts, it doesn't actually hit that. Uh, it, it, there's, there's, you know, some stuff in the background that I'm not going to pretend to understand. Uh, but you have to really bump high voltage up in the BIOS to actually achieve what you're, you're plugging in. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead now and do the extreme situation. And uh, I'm going to try uh, 5.2 gigahertz on this chip. And we're going to really ring her out for a second and see what she is capable of. Two hours later. All right. So there are definitely other settings like load line calibration uh, and maybe even changing a few voltages and stuff like that that you could get way further into uh, here with uh, you know a higher overclock than 5.2 gigahertz uh, if you're delitting and you know and you've probably done your research and know what uh, I'm talking about here but I know that if I set this to that's way too high 1.35 there we go on the uh, core voltage I can do uh, 5.2 bench stable here and achieve a pretty decent uh, score in Cinebench and this is all I'm doing here okay 5.2 uh, or 52 uh, multiplier change the voltage up to 1.35 which is what's supposed to be safe for these chips and uh, again you want to make sure that your temperatures aren't spiking above uh, you know the, the high 80s but we you know we didn't even hit 80 degrees uh, by 5 gigahertz so this shouldn't be a problem you could also go in here and change your fan profile to really you know go but a turbo it does a pretty good job of kicking the fans up once it's under load so I don't really need to do anything there so let's go ahead and boot into Windows and see if my magic has worked itself and uh, you know, uh, just with a couple of clicks of a button, you can get some pretty serious extra performance out of your core i7 7740. One eternity later. Meow. We've got loaded into Windows, and you'll know if uh, you don't have enough volts or you're hit way beyond your limit if you get uh, crashes coming into Windows or crashes running uh, Cinebench or uh, you just see like blue screens where it asks you to wait for a second and uh, you know runs a percentage and then and restarts. Uh, and then you might want to dial your settings back a little bit, uh, but 1.35 volts is all I'd recommend unless you know what you're doing uh, for sure. And um, you know, temperatures, like I say, don't you don't want to go anywhere above the high 80s. And uh, here we go with this solution, you know, open air. This will be different if I put this all in a computer case. So I would definitely have to play with the settings. I might not be able to do quite as high if this was all crammed inside a computer case. So. Let's go ahead and run it. And I'm hoping to break the 1100 mark in Cinebench with this run. So let's go ahead and check it out and see 
if we can do it. Now we can see our temperatures are already getting into the high 80s there. And we hear our AIO kick on full speed here. But uh, as long as we don't hit 90 degrees for this single run, I wouldn't be too, too worried about it. But uh, are we going to do the 1100? Let's see. Boosh! That is a wonderful score. 1-1-1-1. One, 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 one. 1-1-1-1. 11 hundred eleven is a pretty damn good score. So as we can see, we capped out at 91 degrees on uh, the first core there. And this would not be something I would consider for a full-time overclock. Now, Cinebench really puts your chip through the ringer. But uh, still, this is too high, even for this cooling solution, which is a very, very good cooling solution. So uh, I, I checked. I have to be hitting these volts. And as we can see, we got up near 1.2 volts there. Uh, to, and so, you know, it's, it's getting high. It's cooking uh, at this, this rate. I would not want to run this 24-7. But, uh, you know, to, to get almost 1,100 uh, with a 5 gigahertz overclock can be very, very safe. You know, the... the average person the layman can dial those settings in no problem and even on like a 7700k you can kind of follow the same guidelines i've been doing uh and you know you should be able to hit five gigahertz maybe 4.9 on the 7700k and uh you're really rocking some fps in games i'm at watch timmy joe on instagram and twitter i really do dig that cinnamon score 11 11 that's that's awesome and uh stay tuned more videos more overclock more thread river all that good stuff i'm a weird crazy guy i'll see you guys in the next video